Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm getting ready for the day using mostly new products from Sephora. Since it is the Sephora Spring Savings event, I'm testing a lot of new makeup here for the first time. And I'm going to be showing you how I style my hair using some of my favorite products from IGK. I've told you all about how much I love the Good Behavior lineup these items right here. So IGK wanted to sponsor today's video and they sent me some of my all-time must-haves. This is going to be a transformation for the books. This is what my hair looks like when it's air dried versus when I style using these products. So they sent over the Good Behavior 4-in-1 Prep Spray. This is a detangler, 24-hour frizz control, 450-degree heat protection, and shine spray. It contains spirulina protein and coconut oil. This is something that I will spritz on my hair before I blow dry. This is the Good Behavior Spirulina Protein Smoothing Blowout Balm. It's a keratin-like treatment that provides 72-hour frizz control and 450-degree heat protection. You only need a teeny tiny bit of this balm, and it truly does an incredible job leaving your hair feeling so silky smooth as if you just had a keratin treatment at the salon. Now this is what I'm going to use today to style my hair because I've never tried this before. I usually use the Good Behavior Blowout Balm, but this is the Mistress Hydrating Hair Balm with coconut oil. It's a leave-in conditioning balm that won't weigh your hair down. You can apply this to both damp or dry hair, let it air dry or blow it out. This is the Good Behavior Spirulina Protein Smoothing Spray. Again, keratin-like treatment, 24-hour frizz control, and 450-degree heat protection. I use this every single time I style my hair. Usually I apply this after I blow dry. I just kind of mist it all over and then I'll style with my hot tool. It's completely weightless and that's what I love about all of these products even though I layer my styling products as I go so that I can build up heat protection. None of them are heavy. They don't weigh the hair down. So by the end, I still feel like I have a really fresh, clean, very bouncy blowout. And the last product they sent over is this First Class Charcoal Detox Dry Shampoo. It's a deep cleaning, detoxifying, oil erasing, scalp smoothing dry shampoo. And I have gone through several bottles of this. I'm currently using this in my bathroom and then I have a little travel spray as well. So after a couple of days, if I start to get a little oily at the roots, then I would simply freshen up with the First Class Dry Shampoo. First, I'm going to apply my Good Behavior 4-in-1 Prep Spray. I let my hair air dry for as long as possible, but it's still pretty damp. This is a new bottle, so I have to get it going. Just a couple spritzes. I'm just gonna work this in with my fingers. I typically don't brush out my hair or use a brush on my hair until it's completely dry because when your hair is wet, that's when it's the most delicate and fragile. So to prevent breakage, I just kind of use my fingers. And then the second styling product I'm going to use today is this Mistress Hydrating Hair Balm. I am so excited to try this, but I go to the IGK salon in Miami and I'm almost positive they've used this on my hair before. So this is the first time I'm using it at home, but I'm pretty sure I have used this. Oh, the smell. Mmm. All of their products smell so incredible. And I'm using kind of a dime size amount. I have very long hair. I usually use a little bit more than the recommended amount. It feels really nice. It truly does have a balmy texture, which is gonna be even more smoothing than a cream. And I can always use extra hydration, so that's why I decided to go with the Mistress today. Next, I'm just going to quickly rough dry using my Dyson hair dryer. I finished my blow dry with a round brush one section at a time and you can already see how much smoother it looks compared to the air dried hair. It feels really silky smooth, frizz free, absolutely. And it feels really hydrated as well. We're not done just yet. I am going to heat style using my T3 wand, but first I'm going to apply the Good Behavior Spirulina Protein Smoothing Spray, just a light mist. And this is going to help give us even more heat protection. It's still light, fluffy, soft, not sticky, it doesn't get crunchy. All of these styling products work really nicely together. Not only do these products help protect my hair from damage from all of the styling that I do, but I truly believe they have restored life and health back to my hair. 
from all of the damage from going blonde. There's a reason why this has been my go-to lineup for probably close to two years now. They work. Hands down, the best salon quality hair products you can use at home. Hair is now done for the day. I'm gonna scoot in a little bit closer to the camera so we can get into some of the new makeup products I have here to test out. I'm starting with eyes, so I'm gonna prime my eyelids using this new Bobbi Brown Skin Concealer Stick. This is the shade Cool Sand. Now, I typically don't love a stick concealer or some sort of hard, creamy concealer like this for the eyes. I think something like this is better for concealing spots on the face. But I saw this demonstrated on the eyes and it's new, so I've never tried the formula before. I might as well test it out. And this way we can see. I have both the concealer and the new corrector. I'm actually not as concerned about using this to prime my lids. I'm not sure if it's gonna work under the eye but to prime the eyelids is actually working perfect. It really is the perfect amount of coverage. I don't feel like I just added a layer of makeup to my eyelids. They still look like my eyelids, just completely even. I have two new eyeshadow palettes here from Give Beauty from Gwen Stefani. If you didn't know, Gwen Stefani launched her own beauty brand and it's available at Sephora. So this lighter palette is Simple Kind of Life. And then the deeper, cooler toned palette is called Danger Zone. I think both of these are really pretty. They're nice neutral quads. I think this is a really nice starting point for eyeshadow. But I'm going to dip into this one first. This is Simple Kind of Life. This is an all matte palette and there's not a huge shade variation between the colors, but taking my fluffy brush, I am going to dip into Covered in Shells, this kind of taupier shade down here. And I'm going to buff this in the crease. Oh wow, it's a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. It's darker, but it's still a very smooth matte shadow. I'm impressed. I'm also going to use the new matte liquid lipstick from Gwen Stefani in her signature shade of red, of course. So I want to create an eye look that will complement the red lipstick. I gently wiped off my brush and now I'm jumping over to this shade since this one was a little bit too dark. This is shade Obsessed and I'm going to use this to help blend out the crease. With a rougher 14 brush, I'm going to pick up this bottom shade right here. This is called Secrets, and I am going to apply that as deep in the crease as possible. And then I am going to drag it out and create a little bit of a cat eye. I'm going to do my best to create a signature Gwen Stefani kind of all matte cut crease and then bold red lip. So that's what we're attempting. So far, I have to say I'm really impressed with these matte shadows. They're performing really nicely. They look really smooth, not choppy or difficult to blend. And I don't have a lot of fallout. I do have a little bit, but not much. You never know how it's gonna go when a celebrity launches a makeup brand, but I actually think these shadows are incredible. Very easy to work with. I think a lot has changed in this celebrity makeup game. I think, what they've realized, what a lot of brands have realized and investors, I'm sure, is that people aren't going to just pay for the name anymore. They want the packaging. They want high quality. They want really good makeup. It's just too competitive. They can no longer come out with a lackluster product that doesn't perform and expect people to buy it. Your fans will always be your fans. That doesn't mean they're going to buy your product. Because a lot of the celebrity launches... I feel like they've been pretty good. Rare Beauty has been amazing, Fenty Beauty. You know, we have to give all props and credit to Rihanna because I think she was, well, and Victoria Beckham. There are a couple at the forefront of the celebrity makeup revolution, we'll call it, who have created outstanding high caliber brands that can truly compete on the highest level. And I think they've sort of forced everyone to up their game. I haven't tried Rum Beauty. I haven't tried... Flower Beauty from Drew Barrymore. I've heard it's really great. So there are a lot of brands that I've never tried. I've never tried anything from KKW or Kylie Cosmetics. 
But I wouldn't even put them in the same conversation as these brands that are launching at Sephora. A lot of celebrities are launching skincare brands. I know Hailey Bieber is coming out with skin. Winnie Harlow launched a skincare brand. In fact, it's available at Sephora. So they sent me a little PR box with the K Skin products. There's a lot of SPF in here. I haven't tried them yet. Who else? I know there's somebody else who's launching a skincare brand because I was reading people's comments about it. It's a lot. I'm always willing to try new skincare, but that's one of those categories that I usually always go back to my tried and true products because I want products that actually work with really potent ingredients. I don't care if there's a celebrity a name attached to it or not. I want to know what my dermatologist has to say about it. Makeup is a little bit different. You can experiment and play. So I went back with my original brush and I'm just blending right on top. Just kind of softly smoking that out. Next, I picked up a flat shader brush. This is an old concealer brush from Chanel and the Bobbi Brown Concealer. And I'm going to pick this up with my brush and I'm going to use this to cut the crease, or at least the first part, the first half of the crease. So you need something with a pretty sharp edge. That's why I'm using the flat brush. I'm carving into the lid right below the crease. And then I'm just filling in this space with the concealer. When I get to the center of the lid, I'm just gonna kind of taper that off because I'm going to pack a little medium brown eyeshadow on the outer half of the lid. Same thing on the other side. Kind of starting right here at the inner corner of the eye and slowly I'm just following the crease up. Using the same brush, I just wiped it off on a little towel. I'm going back to this original palette, the Simple Kind of Life, and I'm going to apply this kind of creamy eyeshadow right on top of the concealer. And then using the same brush, I'm gonna go into this camel brown and I'm going to use this on the outer half of the lid, right here. And this is almost gonna be a transition to the deeper shade in the outer V, outer crease. I just picked up a Sephora Pro Crease 19 brush and very gently I'm taking this deeper shade and I am just tapping this right in the outer V. Kind of blending the crease, blending into that camel eyeshadow. I'm very curious what the feedback is going to be like on these products. If people will really like this makeup collection or if it will just fizzle out. I think she did a very smart thing creating these two neutral eyeshadow palettes because what she could do next is come out with fun little eyeshadow toppers or little metallic singles that you could pair really easily with either palette. Because she needs something kind of sparkly and fun. But for a first eyeshadow piece for a first product. I think both of these are really easy to use, wearable, great colors, especially this smoky palette. This is something that anybody could integrate into their makeup collection. I have so many new complexion products to try for the face. It's making me a little bit nervous. Usually when I try too many new products all at once, it can turn out to be a disaster, but this is the new Makeup Forever HD Skin. I really wasn't that fussed about this, but I heard so many requests and so many questions and, and then I kind of got curious. So this is shade 2Y23. 
20. And then in parentheses, it says Y305. So I guess that would have been the old shade in the old formula. But let's test it out. Years ago, I had the old Makeup Forever HD formula, and I loved it. That would have been my holy grail foundation. We're talking a long time ago. And it has been a while since I've used a lot of their products. I think it looks really pretty so far. I just pulled up some information in the Sephora app because I realized I had no idea what to expect from the foundation. So it says medium coverage, natural finish, it's a liquid formula, of course. It's supposed to cover for up to 24 hours, powered by a micro skin system that syncs with the skin for true to skin finish. That's really what it looks like in the mirror. It contains that micro skin system, vegetal origin, glycerol, which is supposed to preserve the moisturization of the skin, and then an exe polysaccharide for radiance for 24 hours. I've never worn a foundation. Well, I have worn a foundation for probably close to 24 hours, but not on purpose. I've slept in my foundation. It's always like your worst nightmare when you wake up the next morning and realize what happened. So medium coverage, natural finish. Right in here, it looks so pretty. It truly does look like my skin. I'm kind of blown away. I love the finish. And it has great coverage. I don't feel like I had to apply a lot of foundation to get the coverage that I would want. I can see my little spots right there. I have no idea where they came from, but they've popped up and now I can't cover them. But everything else looks so even. Like I can't see any other little freckles or little spots on my face, no redness. Wow. I don't even feel like I need to set it with anything. I feel like this is perfect as it is. Like if I were just running out the door trying to do a little foundation, I would grab this. Because the finish is so perfect, I don't feel like it's too matte, it's not too dry looking, but it's also not too greasy where I feel like I need a powder. Usually that's how I feel. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy I've tried this. Wow. I almost don't want to ruin it with the Bobbi Brown Concealer. That probably sounds harsh. I, it's not that I think this would ruin the makeup, but I don't typically use a stick concealer. I feel like this might crease on me and not give me the, the normal under eye that I usually love. <sighs> I'm supposed to be testing new makeup, so I'm just going to go for it. But I definitely want to try this foundation again with my usual makeup routine, you know, like all of the same products, the usual suspects from the top drawer, but then use this foundation. I'm going to start with the corrector. This is the new Bobbi Brown Skin Corrector Stick in the shade Light Bisque. It has a slightly peachy pink undertone and that's gonna help color correct darkness, which that foundation completely evened out my skin tone. I don't even feel like I have much darkness. I don't wanna layer too many products. I'm just going to do a little bit right in the corner. I don't feel like I need to use a brush. You know, that actually looks really pretty. The way I've seen this demonstrated is they go in with a little bit of the corrector and then a little bit of the concealer. Next, I'm going in with the Cool Sand Concealer, and same thing, I'm going to do a little bit right here. I'm taking it up on to the bridge of my nose a little bit, the way I normally do, and then I'm also going to draw a little bit out here. 
So I can lift and highlight the eye. Spots on the face I'm not concerned about. It's only that thin, kind of fickle under eye skin that can be very high maintenance, <laughs> very difficult. You know, when I was in California, wow, I noticed my crow's feet, all of the fine lines underneath my eye, they, they came out to play. And I did my best to moisturize and use a face mask, but my skin was so dry. I am also due for Botox. So it inspired me to book my appointment. I definitely felt humbled by my crow's feet while I was on my trip. For this, I'm gonna use the brush. Oh, wow. It's looking great. So smooth. Cream formulas always make me so nervous because I'm afraid it's going to be a little bit too thick and then it's going to crease and it's not going to stop creasing. But this almost feels a little bit more sheer. It doesn't feel like a super thick cream. Maybe I'll have better luck. It seems like I am having better luck with this. When I look closely, it doesn't look like anything has budged. It looks like everything has just blended and melted together seamlessly. I have another new complexion product here. This was sent to me complimentary by Milk Makeup. This is the new Bionic Glow Cream Bronzer in the shade Reality. I think there are two different shades. And this should be the lightest one. Oh. Sealed. It's a good sign. So let's see. Oh, that's pretty. It's creamy, but it's not too thick and opaque like paint. It actually is a little bit like a maybe like a gel cream bronzer, similar to the iconic London. Oh yeah, I could see that blending out really nicely. You could probably use this as maybe a base underneath your foundation. If you go on vacation, you get a little color on your body and you want to match your face. Okay, so I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit on the back of my hand. How to apply? I'm not sure. I don't want to go directly on my face. This is what I'm going to do. I have the foundation brush here from Laura Geller. I've been using this for cream bronzer lately. And I'm just going to kind of smear around in there. It's very natural. Doesn't look like it's breaking up the foundation. I do think the brush probably stole some of the product. My initial squeeze didn't go very far. I really like the color and it almost looks like it has a little bit of a sheen to it. Not much. Maybe just a teeny tiny bit. Okay, so I'm picking up a little bit more. You can barely see it. I know it's adding color to my face, but it's almost, I don't want to say it's too natural, but it's very natural. So glad I discovered this before summer. They sent this to me a while ago. I just, I have a drawer, a separate drawer from my main makeup drawers where I keep all of the products that are sent to me complimentary that I do want to test at some point. I kind of separate everything. As soon as I receive a box of PR, I separate into things that I know there's no possible way I will use. Those either go to friends, family, or giveaway pile. And then I keep the products that I want to use eventually but I don't want them to just get lost in the drawers because then I'll forget about them and never test them. So I have a, a separate set of drawers that I picked up from Etsy that I've been keeping underneath the vanity and it just helps 
with storage and organization. So I pulled this bronzer out of that. I wonder how many other hidden gems are in there just sitting waiting for me to test it. As I suspected, I'm getting a little bit of creasing right here. Not the worst thing in the world, I just need to kind of smudge it out with my fingers and I haven't set with powder yet. So not a huge deal. I just can't get over how fast and easy that bronzer was. But I am going to quickly go back with my foundation brush just in case. Sometimes, because I have so many lights shining on my face, sometimes I'm sort of temporarily blinded when I'm looking in either the little viewfinder or this mirror. It, this mirror is almost too small and close up. I can barely see. So I'll use that as my main mirror. I can't see a thing. Everything looks smooth as butter. And then I go to edit and I just am shocked at how bad everything looks. I don't think that's going to be the case this time, but it happens. I've learned to over blend just in case. Perfect. Now this is not a new product, not at all, but it's new for me. It's the Pat McGrath Lab Setting Powder. This is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. I picked up the shade Light and a little brush. I don't know if the dome of powder is so delicate that any brush just kind of that scratches the surface just breaks it apart, but do you see what's happening? If I just sort of tap my brush in the powder, trying to be really light and delicate, it kicks up all of this dust and there's actually a little crack in the powder itself. And it's not the worst thing in the world if I could catch all of that loose powder, but I'm losing a lot of product accidentally because it just kind of flies all over the place. This setting powder though, it's so pretty. I am a huge fan of this setting powder. And it gives me a little brightness as well. It really does look airbrushed. I don't want to jinx myself. I still have some new products to test. But this look is coming together really nicely today. Considering all of the new products. For blush and highlighter, I'm using this Iconic London Silk Glow Duo. This was sent to me complimentary a while back and it's the shade Rose Glow, but I just love the look of this pink and the highlighter is really pretty as well. So I'm just going to dust a little bit of this on my cheeks. I don't have a lot of Iconic London products. I tried the liquid bronzer last year and that might be it. pretty. It's very soft, but that's perfect. Since I'm doing a red lip, I don't really want to do a bold cheek. Just a little something to give me enough color. I'm going to go into this really pretty champagne gold highlighter. Oh, wow. I like it. It's soft, but it's very pretty. I don't want to over highlight either, just a little glow. Complexion is now done. I need to finish the eyes, so I picked up the Simple Kind of Life palette, where it all began, and a pencil brush. And I'm going into the deeper taupey shade, and I'm going to buff this beneath the lower lash line. This is another product that I purchased during the Sephora Spring Savings event. It's from KVD Beauty. It's the Tattoo Liner in Mad Max Brown 20. I was looking for a brown eyeliner. I think this might be a little bit darker than what I was hoping for, but it should still work. And the reason I went with the KVD is because I've used this in the past, the black, and I loved it. It lasted such a long time and it was very easy to use. Give it a little shake. It really does allow you to get so precise. I 
I did just a teeny tiny little inner wing. And it is so easy to create those very detailed wings using this pen. I quickly filled in my eyebrows and did mascara off camera. I will link the products I used down below. And the last step is lips. So I have this vibrant red lipstick, the signature lip of Gwen Stefani. This is Give Beauty. On all of the packaging, it says me, you, yours. It says that inside the mirror as well. So I guess that's the tagline from the brand. But I really, again, I love this packaging. I think the font of the text, everything looks so cool. And this is shade Original Recipe. I'm still here. Maybe it's the original recipe formula and the shade is called I'm Still Here. I'm not sure. I believe this is the only red liquid lipstick so far. I am so happy with the makeup look so far. This eye, I know it's a brown eye and I usually stick with neutral eyeshadows and that's probably incredibly boring for some of you. I do receive comments from time to time saying she does the same makeup look and that's kind of true because I try to do flattering makeup every single day. I'm really not the best YouTuber to follow if you like really colorful, vibrant, playful eyeshadow on a regular basis. I love to play around with makeup and do interesting, fun looks, but that's just not the style of makeup that I usually wear. I don't think most people wear their makeup that way pretty regularly. So this is what I know. This is the type of makeup that I will actually wear confidently. So that's why I like to show this style of makeup. But it's been a while since I've done an all matte eye. So hopefully this will be like the cherry on top of a really great testing new makeup. All right, let's see. Oh, kind of smells like vanilla cupcake. I love that. Mmm. It's not too sweet, but it smells really good. It is a very matte liquid lipstick. But now that it's dried down, I don't think I would be able to kind of rub my lips together. Mm -mm. There's no slip to it. Which it feels good. It doesn't feel bad and it doesn't look overly drying. I'm not usually a huge fan of matte lipsticks. Let's do a transfer test. Ooh, not bad. I think I need to wear it for a while and see how it makes my lips feel after a few hours, but so far, I think it's really pretty. I mean, it's a gorgeous lipstick shade. Hair's done, makeup's done, and I finally changed out of my robe. So this is the complete look for the day. And overall, I am so impressed with all of the new products that I tried today. I think this is such a fun, very classic, kind of Hollywood-inspired makeup look with the bold red lip. The red lipstick, I really love the color. It's bothering me slightly simply because it's matte and I'm just not really comfortable wearing mattes. I'm not really used to wearing them. So I will most likely throw something glossy or at least a little bit hydrating on top of this. It doesn't look terrible and it doesn't feel terrible. It just comes down to personal preference, but I do really like the shade. The eyeshadow palettes are very impressive. For matte eyeshadows, they're not dusty. I think the texture is really nice. The color payoff is there. They're easy to blend. And you can create really beautiful, everyday neutral eye looks using either one of these palettes. This one is a little bit warmer, simple kind of life, but it's not too warm. If you're somebody who struggles to find a good neutral eyeshadow palette because everything pulls orange on you, I think you would really like this. 
this is really the only warm color and I applied it to the lid and it does not look that warm. And then if you want something really cool toned or maybe even a bit smoky, I would go with this second eyeshadow palette, Danger Zone. This is also really beautiful. And you have this one slightly shimmery shade right here. I'm really glad I experimented with both. I love both palettes. And had they not sent these to me complimentary, I most likely would have skipped them because I'm on my low buy for the year and I'm not purchasing any more neutral eyeshadow palettes. But I'm glad I was able to test these out so I can recommend them to you. If you are in the market for neutral eyeshadow quads, these are really incredible. I also really like this iconic London duo, the blush highlighter. This is really pretty. They have a couple different shades. If this blush doesn't really speak to you. There's also a really beautiful coral blush that's pretty. So highly recommend these. You get a ton of products. And now the complexion. The concealer, the corrector, the foundation. I think it looks really beautiful. I've only had it on my face a little while now, so I'm going to have to do a true wear test, but I'm impressed. This bronzer, this might be one of my favorite new things that I tested. It's beautiful. Just one of the most natural liquid bronzers I've ever tried. And I think the shade is perfect. I did not apply any other powder bronzer on top. The color that you see on my face is just from this. I think it looks kind of perfect. If I didn't have kind of a smoky eye and bold red lipstick, I would tell you that it's that it actually looks very natural, but I do think it is a really natural bronzer. I'm gonna use this a lot over the summer. I'm almost done with my nude sticks, Terracotta Tan, the little cream bronzer. So I'll just throw this in the top drawer and go through it. The last item is this little powder. It's beautiful, it does a great job setting the face. It's very soft and delicate. I already feel like I'm going through it. <laughs> because every time I even tap lightly with the brush, a big cloud of smoke just kind of puffs up. I'm going to be very careful with this powder, but I am happy I finally tried it. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for getting ready with me. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing the process and hearing my thoughts on some of these new products from Sephora. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I'm curious if you've tried any of these products. Has anything interested you? Have you picked up something really exciting from the Sephora Spring Savings event? Let us know down below in the comment section. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.